Rockers, welcome back. Today's guests, we have Kyle and Bailey Rabb. They are currently serving as long-term missionaries with an organization called Impact Africa in South Africa. But the journey to get there, to become missionaries, to say yes, was a really interesting one. Bailey had felt called to missions for many, many years. Kyle, not so much. And so the journey of laying down this dream that Bailey had, but then Kyle hearing from the Lord and picking that dream back up and walking in obedience is just so such a testament to God's faithfulness in their obedience in their walk with him. And then they move to Africa and they find out that they're pregnant, which was such a miracle. And they talk about why that was such a miracle with some health stuff that Bailey was walking through. But the summary of their lives seems to be they, them taking small steps of obedience in the direction that God's calling them to do and God doing abundantly more than they could ask or imagine. And that can be true for you too. I mean, that is the, the walk of the believer is not to get cash and prizes from God, but to just take small steps of obedience towards God and see what he does with it. And they are such a testimony of that. You are going to love them. They radiate the light of Jesus more than a lot of people I have met. I mean, they're the, one of the cutest couples which you'll see if you're watching. Uh, they just love each other. They love the Lord and they're really just trying to do what he's calling them to do. And they are walking that out. And so I know you're gonna get a lot out of this conversation. Here it is with Kyle and Bailey Rabb. All right, Bailey and Kyle, welcome to the Neighbors Podcast. Thank you. Hi, so thank you. <laughs> I'm so excited you're here. This is really crazy. Well, right before we started recording, we always pray for the episode because, you know, prayer is important. And I thanked God for crossing our paths last week. Yeah. I just happened to see you in Bold Bean, Bailey. And for everybody that doesn't know yet, which we'll obviously get into it, you guys currently live in South Africa. Yep. So mm. the fact that you were in Jack's <laughs> Beach was a little bit strange. Shocking. <laughs> it's a little shocking, if you will. And I immediately was just like, what are you doing this whole week while you're in town? Can you guys come and be on the podcast? Yeah. Because I tried to have you on the last time you guys were in town and our schedules didn't align. And I'm just so grateful that they aligned this time yeah. and that everybody gets to hear y'all's story because it's incredible. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for being here. Yeah. So like I said, you currently live in South Africa, which we I we already had a South Africa episode with Demi Tebow. Yeah. This is, and I said on her episode, one of my favorite guests we've ever had on was a pastor from South Africa, Pastor mm -hmm. One. He was on, yeah. I think, season one or two. And he he's one of my favorite people. So I just love my South Africa people. <laughs> Not that you are South African, but you currently live there. Yeah. So, you know, that counts, We're bringing too. it full circle. We, <laughs> you really are. And so I'm feeling like neighbors in South Africa, there's something going on here. There might need to be a South Africa trip in oh. the future. Oh, yeah. We can plan that. <laughs> yeah, yes. for sure. Um, okay, so like I said, you live in South Africa, but you used to live in Jacksonville. And now that you've been there, to start off, what is the number one thing you miss mm. from the States? Not like deep. Yeah. Let's start with like lighthearted, funny, like a food or I don't know, something like what's something that you come home and you're like, I have, I can't wait to have this. <laughs> well, uh, immediately out of the airport, uh, we went straight to Angie's. Obviously. And so that was well, kind Angie's of. Is now in the airport. It yeah, is. Airport. You could, <laughs> we, you could go know. to like the yes. hole in the wall. Yeah, got to go to the OG Angie's for sure. So that was like right off the plane. We're like, we're going Angie's. You didn't even go. And then, you didn't even stop at home. You no. Go straight to Angie's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then uh, for me recently, I don't know. Zaxby's has been a big one for Zaxby's? me. Zaxby's. I don't know so why. Random. <laughs> so, so random. You wouldn't believe but how weird the things are that you crave. You're like, I mm -mm. don't even like that, but Did I you, need it. Were you a big it. Zaxby's guy before? Not a huge Zaxby's guy, <laughs> honestly. I was. Just, I, I think a couple of our interns were big Zaxby's guys, and we started talking about it, and it got me thinking, like, okay, I could go for some Zaxby's that as well. That is so funny. That's so, <laughs> so random. So random. Yeah. I have my one thing that I always have to get a lot of while I'm here is this is super random too is like frozen yogurt from the gate gas station. Mm. Do you know? Yes, like this, this is, is so random. random. <laughs> and then there's things like okay, Yobi? cheese Isn't it called Yobi? 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 Yes. yes. In the gas station. Yes. <laughs> and the, taro, the taro though. The taro flavor, is so good. Specifically. Yes. But it's like weird. You just crave things because you mm -hmm. know you can't have them. Yeah. <laughs> and so then you're like, I just have to have that when I, I go home. I have to have gas station <laughs> frozen yogurt. It's yeah. so strange. And like things like um, cheese it 
nuggets aren't a thing there. Okay. Goldfish. So like those are the weird <laughs> things. You're like, oh, I wish I had some goldfish. Or chomps are a big one for me. Oh. I lived off chomps while I was here. So Trader Joe's chomp or like buying my my chomps at Trader Joe's. That was just a staple of my diet. You can't Obviously. buy chomps <laughs> over in South Africa. So okay, so now every all of your family and friends listening now know what to include in your care package. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Chomps and cheeses yeah. and Definitely. maybe Zaxby's <laughs> or, <laughs> or like some sauces. Yeah, then you could like yeah. Yeah. make sauces. it feel like yeah, Zax sauce or Chick Fil A sauce. Yeah, I could oh, get some of that over there. Sauces. Yeah. yeah. Yes. All right, so before we get to how you said yes to moving to South Africa, how did y'all meet? What, what's your story of coming together? Yeah. So I'm not from Jacksonville. Kyle's from Jacksonville. Um, mm -hmm. Born and raised. Jack Speecher. Duval. <laughs> um, I, a Jack shirt. Very appropriate. Yeah, That's exactly. Who. I'm from the Midwest, originally Michigan. My family's in Indiana now. Um, but when COVID hit, I had nothing planned for my life, basically. My only plans were that I wanted to be a missionary. And so when I when COVID hit and I knew that it was truly off the table, like I cannot travel the world, I cannot go work for a missions organization, I just kind of was like, all right, Lord, what do you want to do with me? Like, I'm just chilling, like I'm living with my parents. Um, so I was in Indiana at the time and I had a friend, um, Caitlin, who was from Jacksonville. We had met a couple years prior at an internship, a missions internship, and she was like, come down to Jacksonville. You should totally just like, just hang out with me, stay with my family um, for a couple weeks because we have nothing else to do um, and come for the beaches. Basically, the beaches had just opened up in Jacksonville. So I was like, OK, that sounds way more fun than walking yep. the same block around my <laughs> like, house right now. Um, so I came down for a little trip and uh, my friend Caitlin was a part of a Bible study that was hosted at Kyle's parents' house. Mm -hmm. It was a young adults um, Bible study, kind of a bunch of 11, 22 ers And so she's she took me to her Bible study, like while I was on vacation down with her. And basically while I was here, I was like, I can't leave Jacksonville. It's such a great community. Mm. I was so desperate for people who love Jesus and cool young people. Mm. And that wasn't really, there wasn't much of that kind of community where I was from. And so I was like, I'm just going to move down for the summer until COVID clears up and then I'll go <laughs> back, you know, overseas mm. or something like that. But I met Kyle at that Bible study really early on after mm. I moved here um, and we started dating, yeah, like probably a month or two after I officially moved down here. Wow. So, yeah. So then I was like, I can't leave now. <laughs> okay. So Kyle, did you, did you have missions on your mind or heart? Ever? No, <laughs> not at all. So honestly. how did that go? <sighs> so <laughs> that's a big story. Yeah. I think with us starting to date, um, like, like quickly became a part of the conversation, especially after four weeks of us dating, I asked Bailey to elope. <laughs> so um, this man was and sure. <laughs> they did weird things. Weird. But you're just like, this yeah. feels like you should do this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she said no. <laughs> but because of that, we knew like we were both in this seriously. And we wanted to continue pursuing like marriage. Um, and so it quickly became a conversation of, hey, Bailey's like, I... I'm a missionary. Like I'm going out there. Like, go, what girl. do you think about this? And for <laughs> me, like, I was like, this, so yeah. you in or out? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, for, and I was like, honestly, I've never felt like a push or a call towards missions, but I know that like I want to be obedient and whatever that is. And so, like, if mm -hmm. the Lord brings us missions, then I'll say yes. But at this point in time, I know that's not what we're supposed to be doing, or at least yeah. that's what not what I'm supposed to be doing. Because at that point, we still. Uh, we're just dating, moving yeah. towards engagement. So. Yeah. So that was really confusing for me. Um, I kind of had been on this journey with the Lord um, when it came to missions. I felt like I was kind of pushing God away for years of, I felt like he kept putting on my heart missions, missions, missions. And I was like, no, that's not what I want for my life. Like I want my life to look a certain way. And that just doesn't add up with mission. So that kind of started in high school. And it wasn't until I was, um, going into my senior year of college, I did an internship in Haiti. Um, and two weeks into it, I felt like God really grabbed a hold of me and was like, this is like, this kind of lifestyle is what I've called you to. Mm -hmm. Like you're, I've built you for it. And so I finally was like, okay, I'm going to stop pushing against this. I really do feel so on fire for the Lord when I'm doing this, when I'm overseas, um, like in a different culture. I just loved that, that whole part of overseas missions. But on top of that, I just figured out I really loved sharing the gospel. I loved mm. encouraging people with the word of God and it just really lit me up. And so I was like, well, if this is what it looks like to be obedient to Jesus, then I just want to do this for the rest of my life. Mm. So 
I kept chasing after, okay, now missions is the thing. And I kind of made it a little bit of an idol from that point on though. So I was like, okay, God and missions, they go together. Mm. And to the point where then at some points I wasn't really listening to God anymore. I was just chasing after this idea of like, Mm. I'm going to be an overseas missionary, like just kind of this glamorous idea. Um, And so when I met Kyle and told him I wanted to be a missionary and he didn't want to, I was like, okay, God, what does this mean? Do I ditch the guy? Cause like, I don't want to be disobedient. I don't want to lay down something that maybe like that you've asked me to do. Um, But then at the same time, I started to feel like maybe I was actually being disobedient in the fact of like, I was chasing this missions thing and God hadn't promised it to me. It wasn't like, he was like, you will be a missionary at this time, at this date, this is what it's going to look like. Like we're all called to be missionaries everywhere, you know? And so, um, even in our hometowns. And so I had to start to wrestle with the Lord of like, what did that mean? When you kind of spoke this over me years ago, what did that really mean? And have I been making it something that maybe it wasn't, you know? Um, And so I finally got to a place where I really set down missions, even though that was, that felt really, really scary to me. And it wasn't because I just wanted to date Kyle. I truly, it was more scary to me to set down missions than to break, like end things with Kyle. Mm. Uh, It was really like I felt like I had given up what the one thing I was like so sure of, like, Mm. this is what God has told me to do. Um, and so, but when I did set it down, it was so cool because the, like I never had connected fully to a hometown or anything like that really got rooted anywhere because I was so focused on like, I'm leaving, Mm. like I'm not staying here. I'm going somewhere else, but it allowed me to just rest in Jacksonville. And Mm. I, I really think that that's the reason I have such strong community here in Jacksonville and God blessed that so much. Like we loved being a part of our church. We loved our community. We just felt like it was the best season. Um, I mean, we got married and everything like that, but we were just surrounded by so many amazing people. And so, I think if I hadn't been able to just set it down, I wouldn't have married Kyle because I would have been so focused on making it happen in my way, my time. And then also, I just think I would have missed out on a lot of beautiful parts of that So when you say you set it down, you literally were like, I don't think this is in the cards. Like, I don't think I'm moving overseas. I had to get to a place where I said, if it never happens, I'm not going to blame Kyle. Mm. I'm not going to blame, like, this is between me and the Lord. Mm. If he has called me to do this, we're not going to miss it. He's going to make it happen. Um, but it might be, it might happen in 50 years. It might, or it may never happen. You know, like if I've misunderstood this calling, then, then it won't happen. But I do believe like I had this hope that I had a hope that the Lord would ultimately call both of us overseas one day. Um, but I was like, Lord, if you do that, please tell Kyle, like (laughs) give it to Kyle, not me, like speak that calling over him and give him an excitement for missions rather than speaking it to me because I, I didn't know if I could trust myself. Like, I'm like, if a door opens, I'm going to want to run towards it. Like I want to go, I want to go, but I want to see, like, I, I will know it's you if you speak it to Kyle. Um, and so so, apparently that happened at some point, which how did that happen? (laughs) Um, so we had been married for what a year, almost a year. Yeah. And, um, the founders of impact Africa, um, were in Jacksonville Mm -hmm. and they, out of the blue, just messaged Bailey on Instagram and like, hey, um, you guys live in Jacksonville, right? Like, do you have time to meet us for coffee in a few hours? Which pause, I was an intern there in 2020. Yes. So that okay. is before COVID hit. So I knew the founders. I was just an intern working for them for two months. So they had a, a loose connection to me, but I hadn't mm-hmm. talked to them in years. Wow. So, yeah. yeah. And they had come here actually to discuss like partnership stuff with Tim Tebow Foundation. And thankfully, Mm -hmm. uh, I was teaching. The school year just ended, so summer, and Bailey's working from home. So we had the ability to just say, yeah, like, we can make it. And so we went out there um, expecting something to come from this conversation. And by the end of the hour, an hour and a half, we are there. Really, it was just catch up, meet each other, and then we were just leaving. (laughs) We kind of left the conversation like, okay, that was strange. Like, Mm -hmm. we thought something was maybe going to happen from there. Yeah, like they Um, would offer an opportunity for us to come Mm. work for them or something. We're like, what? It was just a hangout. It was like, okay, that was nice, you know? (laughs) And and so it was a little confusing, but we were just like, okay, whatever. We'll just keep going. And it was a a few weeks later at 11.22, just um, in worship after service. I was down at the altar just praying. Just be like, okay, Lord, like, like, what do you have for us? And he just brought the the picture of 
their faces, the founders' faces back into my mind. I just wow. knew like I have to reach back out to them. And it was in that moment where it was like, oh gosh, <laughs> like <laughs> if I like do this, like who knows like where our life can go. And so it probably took me a week or so to even bring that up to Bailey and then another couple of weeks to like build up the courage to actually like mm-hmm. set up another phone call because I, I honestly was scared. I was like, oh my gosh, like we have like an amazing life here. With so many like amazing friends, like families here, like mm-hmm. we're just settled and this could completely unsettle yeah. everything. Yeah. And so we had just closed on our house like the week that we went to coffee with mm-hmm. them. So like wow. it was like we're making moves yeah. to stay here, you know? Yeah. And so eventually I did set up the call and um, we got on the phone and I basically started the conversation with, I know I'm supposed to call you, but I don't really know why. So I'm hoping <laughs> maybe you do. <laughs> and he responded with, yeah, actually, like we do have this opportunity. Yeah. Like we wow. think you and Bailey would be a great fit for and we'd love to pursue it together and see uh what the lord has in this and so that was i think july of 21 20 or 22 two? yeah july 22. 22. So, pause yeah. there kyle how did you work through that fear because i think mm-hmm. for men especially you know the responsibility yeah. of leading their family of settling what is unsettled mm. like that is the call of the husband and the man and yeah. so getting an idea that's scary mm. can then be okay how do i say yes or at least just take the step in faith so how did you work through that like go from fear to faith mm. of like yeah. i'm going to be obedient to what god's mm. calling me to do yeah so i think we can backtrack a little bit um there was a joby sermon on psalm 27 i believe and at the end of that message he hit on the last verse um where it talks about just like waiting in the lord and how that that waiting wasn't just passive sitting around like hoping something Mm -hmm. happens but like an act of waiting like being ready for when the lord brings you something to move in that moment Mm -hmm. and so that was kind of how i was trying to live my life like for the couple years like leading up to that and um i had thankfully been tested in that a couple times (laughs) prior to that and had like learn to just like okay like take that step even if you don't know like what's going to come from it like you can trust that like the lord has like your good in mind Mm. for that and so we saw that play out a little bit through different job opportunities and um it had led to me at that point um being a teacher at ponte vita high school and just a really amazing opportunity that could not have come from anywhere Mm. aside from the Lord and just being obedient in the little things that got us there. And so when this came along, Mm -hmm. um, being able to look back on those moments of like, okay, like I turned down this job. I didn't know why, but it led to this. Mm. And then this was just like a first step. And we walked into it being like, okay, like us saying yes to starting this process doesn't automatically mean it's going to happen. And so like we might not end up being missionaries, but we mm-hmm. we have to take one step of faith right now. Yeah. And so that was like big for me was like, okay, Lord, like this first step could go anywhere, but I just want to be obedient in that. And then the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. Wow. And then will that lead to us being in South Africa? At that point, we really didn't know because there were a lot of variables and there were a lot of things that we had to work through between us and the organization and just everything else, too. But, like, just starting the process, I think, seemed a lot more manageable than, Mm. like, okay, at this moment, I'm committing to moving to South Africa. Okay, there's so much in this. I need need people to hear. Okay. The first is this was not the first time God was calling you into a step of obedience. So... What you said is so important for people to hear is that there were other times before Mm. this that you can look back on that were smaller decisions. I mean, a job is a huge decision, but smaller things that were put in front of you that you went to God for, you listened to where the Holy Spirit was leading and you stepped in that direction Mm. because 
it's like I, it makes me think about David. And yeah. David didn't one day just step into being king. Yeah. He didn't just step onto the battlefield and kill Goliath without any preparation. There were things before in his life where mm. he was learning how to become good at using a slingshot, yeah. where he's using stones randomly, and then he gets caught. So that's such a key piece for people is that if God has put something on your heart that feels really big, mm. it's important to look back on what you, what he's, how he's been preparing you in other yeah. seasons mm-hmm. to be able to say yes in that moment. Exactly. And he, he might be calling you to something big and crazy, but it's probably just yeah. one step. Now you mm-hmm. ended up moving overseas, which yes. did end up being the big, wow, big, bold yeah. thing. But you knew it wasn't like you went to that altar, prayed a prayer, and God would said, move to South Africa yeah. next right. week. Leave everything, leave all, uproot everything, you know? He gave you just one step, the mm-hmm. thing you could manage. Because yeah. I don't, I'm not trying to speak for you, but where you might have been mentally was maybe you weren't ready to all of a sudden be ready to move to South yeah. Africa yeah, next week. definitely wasn't. But yeah. you, could have, you could start the conversation. And mm-hmm. so leaning into, it doesn't have to be that big, crazy thing. Mm-hmm. It can be just one step in that direction and being open-handed with where mm-hmm. God calls you. So that's yeah. so good. Thank yeah. you for sharing yeah. that. And, and uh, the crazy thing too is like through the next nine months of like discernment and prayer and like processing, when we got to the point of, saying okay we're moving to south africa it just felt like another one of those small steps mm-hmm. like it right. didn't feel like that huge massive decision because of all the things that we did leading up to yeah. it too wow yeah so good i think it's so good to remember like obedience is a muscle that has to be worked in our lives and like wow. you have to start like the lord oftentimes gives us small things to say yes to first and works up that like okay i'm gonna make you a little bit stronger it's like strength training sure. like not that i do that but <laughs> <laughs> but like yeah like okay i'm gonna give you something small just just say yes and like watch like your faith grow in me because i'm gonna show up in it but like the Lord is so honored by our yes to him. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's just such a, it's a connecting experience when we say yes to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And every time you do it, you just feel stronger to say yes next time because Mm -hmm. you're like, I've seen what obedience has done in my life. It's Mm -hmm. it's produced so much fruit, you know? Yeah. So gosh, guys, so good. Okay. So now South Africa, how did we, how did you specifically get to South Africa? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it was because of my connection back, I was an intern in 2020 with Impact Africa. That was a super random thing. I just wanted to find somewhere to do missions and the Lord led me there in 2020. Um, But I actually didn't think I would ever go back. I felt like the, like in my discernment process of being like, should I go be a missionary here? Should I be a missionary here? Should I do this? Blah, blah, blah. Um, I felt like there was a lack of peace about going like ending up in South Africa for some reason. I loved the organization. I loved, it was su- such a healthy, great organization, but for whatever reason, I felt like the Lord kind of closed that door in my heart. So it was really funny when Kyle came to me and was like, I think I'm supposed to reach back out to them. I was like, no, like, I'm not sure because <laughs> I thought I heard a no, like I thought that was a no for me. Um, and it's funny because had I sought out like going and working for this organization in 2020 or, you know, whenever the world opened back up after that, I would be going as a single person, like just, I would be going in a totally different situation. I think the Lord was really wanting me, like wanting to bring me full circle back around Mm. and both of us together. And so South Africa, it's not necessarily that we were like, we have a heart for South Africa or Mm. that God ever really put that like as a, as a, yeah, as a specific place, it was really like an open door. It's just wow. an opportunity to go and do what we felt like God was telling us to do. And I think that was a good thing that I really like learned from Kyle was just like, okay, we can be like picky in this way. Like I can be like, okay, I think God's telling me to be a missionary, but I think that I should go here, 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 sure. or like do it this way or whatever. And it's like, it's not about us. It's not about having this idea of like, oh, I feel like I'm supposed to do this. It's like, okay, we feel confident that God has called us to be obedient, that he's called us to share the gospel with people, to just do, like, be a part of his kingdom work. And this is the door that he's opened up Mm -hmm. in front of us. So let's take a step and move forward. And ultimately, when like Kyle said, by the end of that, we're like, okay, we feel confident that this is where we're supposed to go. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, we had no like specific call to South Africa. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. just what God had led us to. Yeah. Well, there's so much in that too. I mean, everybody, every believer's call is to love God and make him known. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And 
then he gives us specific assignments within that calling. Mm -hmm. And so to be open-handed and not let your preferences drive the calling, mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of rich joy to be felt in that yeah. when you lay that down and say, okay, God, I know I'm confident our calling is to love you and make you known, and you're going to make a way wherever that is, mm -hmm. instead of feeling like you've told me this, 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 and this. <laughs> and maybe he does do that for yeah. some people. but. Definitely. Really just being open-handed to where he's mm -hmm. asking you to step into, regardless of what your preconceived notions were. I yeah. mean, you thought the door was closed. Mm -hmm. Right, <laughs> exactly. South Africa. Mm -hmm. And God just had something else in mind, and yeah. you just have no idea what's mm -hmm. on the other side of just staying in step with, okay, I know what our overarching calling is. Yeah. So then that that allows the freedom to pick up what you're asking me to pick up and mm -hmm. to put down what you're asking me to put down. Right. And not creating idols of... Mm -hmm. Well, no, but this is the thing that I've put so much yeah. value in that I thought I was really clear on. And God's like, no, actually, the only thing that's clear is what our calling is yeah. in general. Mm -hmm. I've, I've never said, you know, nowhere in the Bible is it like you will get a specific <laughs> yeah. time and place yeah. and location and all right. that. Right. And yeah. sometimes when God gives us hints and like clues, we actually make a bigger mess with it because we're like, <laughs> yes. okay, I've got my assignment and we just want to run right, right now. And I think that, I mean, think about how hard, speaking of David, like how hard it would have been for him to know, like I'm anointed to be the next king, but now I have to sit yes. in this period mm -hmm. where I'm not the king. Yes. And he walked that out really beautifully. But I think that it's actually like, sometimes more challenging when God gives you a glimpse in the like way ahead because you kind of then get pigeonholed like you like are sure. so stuck on it and I think people can get really stuck in a season being like God gave me this word and why is it not working out and it can lead to a lot of confusion and so I think when God does if he does speak pretty clearly to you about maybe something that's in your future have the like have open hands with it still because it might play out a thousand percent differently than you think. And it probably think. will. Yeah, yeah. it probably Honestly. will. Yeah. It probably is not at all what you think it yeah. is. But mm -hmm. you're still going to be able to look back and be like, oh, he was he was speaking truth to right. me. Like mm -hmm. he had something to say to me. Um, and obviously I got to see that calling come to fruition. But there were many years where I was like, did I hear him wrong? What's sure. going on? How do I make this happen? Like I was so confused with yeah. this because I was trying to hold on to it a little too tight. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you end up moving to South Africa when? January? Um, um, October, October of okay. 2023. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you've been there almost a year. Mm -hmm. And so you get to South Africa. And now tell us about your first year. What happened in the first year that blew you away? <laughs> well, we definitely learned a lot in our first year when it came to just our job and everything. But one of the most surprising things is if you're watching the YouTube, <laughs> um, I'm pregnant and yes. I found out I was pregnant, um, I think we were only five months in to our, yeah, You moved assignment. to South Africa your whole <laughs> yeah. life, and you find out five months in you're pregnant. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they always say, like, the first year, you're just figuring out. By year two, three, you can right. kind of get your rhythm. I'm like, I think I'm going to be on a roller coaster for all <laughs> these years. I don't know. Yeah. So, uh -huh. yeah, so we found out we were pregnant in... Mm -hmm. um, March. March. Uh, I found out on my birthday, uh, which is pretty birthday. cool birthday yeah, present. Yeah, she found sweet. out the day before and was dying the whole day I came to found out. Yeah. Um, but she wanted to wait and and That's give me a birthday. little onesie and pregnancy Aww. test as my birthday present. <laughs> which can so. you give us some context for yeah. also why? I mean, obviously, pregnancy is a miracle no matter totally. what. But for y'all's story, mm. why you know why was this so significant? Yeah, this is like a really huge thing in our life. Obviously, like you're saying, pregnancy is a big deal and it's always a blessing. It's always a miracle. Um, but we, so I personally, I have endo had endometriosis, so which is basically a condition where things are a little out of whack in your uterus, basically. And so it caused um, a lot of pain um, on a regular basis. On a monthly basis, I was on the floor writhing mm. in pain, like on prescription painkillers to wow. deal with um, the pain that would come monthly and had a lot of hormonal issues that... Um, I was really very, it was very discouraging at times. Um, I found out that I had this condition in 2017, but I was, you know, young in college. I didn't really know anything about it. And so I just basically was like, okay, I'll just take medication. Birth control is really the only thing that they can offer you for management and surgery. Those are the only mm -hmm. things. Um, and it's not a curable disease. It's just it's something you're going to live with forever kind of thing. Or, yeah. So basically... Um, I didn't have, for a long time, for years, I didn't have a, like, a plan of how I was going to deal with this. It was just kind of management. Um, and I 
knew that a risk with endometriosis is that infertility could be a possibility. Um, and so from a early time, I was like, okay, there's a chance I might never be able to get pregnant or that we might struggle one day, but it was far enough away that it wasn't really something I thought about a lot. Um, but when we got married, I decided, okay, I really want to be focused on figuring out some way to heal this. And I had heard of other people being able to heal it naturally with all. So I decided, okay, maybe I'll go the natural route and try to heal it that way. Um, but I felt really convicted. We went, we had a service at 1122 where, um, our pastor invited us up to, uh, be prayed over for healing. And Kyle and I both went up there and we were going up for different reasons. He was praying for his shoulder and I was um, actually going up there to pray on behalf of a friend because I thought, oh, I don't have anything that needs to be healed. And for some reason, I just had been living in this season where I didn't even think to invite the Lord into the healing of my endometriosis. And it just wasn't something I thought about regularly. Um, but when we go up for, to pray, Kyle put his hand on my stomach while we're praying. And I was like, what is he doing? And then I, it clicked and I was like, oh, like he's praying for my endometriosis mm -hmm. in this moment. And I felt so convicted that why have I never asked the Lord to heal me? Like, I just didn't even think it was something to bring to him. Mm -hmm. um, we weren't trying to have kids anytime soon, so it still felt very far off. But I was like, OK, Lord, I'm ready to step into this process with you, this journey with you. I want you to heal me. And so I like threw away all my birth control that week. And I was like, I'm not doing any of this other stuff to deal with it. I'm just going to really believe in, in you to heal this. Obviously I was still trying to do lifestyle things to help my body thrive, but I started this journey where I was inviting a lot of people in my life in to be praying for me and wow. be praying over me regularly. And so for, this was in 20. 20 as or 2021. So I decided, all right, I'm going to start really taking this seriously, having people pray for me and be praying every time they offer prayer at any church, anywhere, I'm going to ask yeah. for a healing. <laughs> and so, you know, I went through years of continually still being in pain and month after month thinking, okay, maybe this will be the month where God heals me. And then being in pain again um, and being on the floor crying and being like, Kyle, why is this happening? Like, I'm begging the Lord in these moments to heal me. This is so unbearable. Like, and it was scaring me because I was also afraid for this, the possibility I would never have kids. If it's this bad, if this pain is so bad, it means that things are not going how they should in my body. And so, um, yeah, I saw moments of healing. I saw moments where the Lord would take away pain. Like I had Kyle praying over me when I'm on the floor crying and I would see moments where the Lord would be like, okay, I'm going to take away the pain right now. Wow. And so we had this like hope, like, okay, the Lord is with us in this. Um, and I had this hope for the future that the Lord would bring us a baby one day. But there were a lot of moments where I struggled in like, I see God performing miracles all the time to other people, like healing them. And I believe he can do this, but why is he not doing this for me? And I, I really struggled with this idea of faith. Like, do I have enough faith? Like, is it me? Is there something wrong with me and the way that I'm approaching this with the Lord? Mm. Um, and I think that there's a lot of people who are hurting, especially people with physical ailments that are praying for healing and they've been praying for a long time and they're not seeing the miracle come and they're starting to question, is there something wrong with me? Yeah. Um, or is something wrong with my faith? And that was just so like close to the chest where I was like, oh, like I, I really believe Jesus. Do you believe that I believe it? Yeah. Like, I know you can heal me. So what, like, is there something wrong um, with me? And ultimately I felt like the Lord was so kind because he just kept meeting with me over and over again. Like I still, he continued to sustain my faith that he could heal. Mm. But he also brought me to an understanding that if he didn't, it didn't mean he didn't love me. Mm. If he didn't do it in my timing, that didn't correlate with how much he cared for me or what his plans were for me, like that my circumstances didn't equal his care for me. Mm. And so I knew that in those moments where I'm in pain or I'm on the ground, like a mess and crying out to him, like he's with me, he yeah. hears me. And it's not his like turning his back on me that I'm not healed yet, you know? Wow. And so I, I really wanted to believe for the miracle, but I also wanted to hold this open hand posture with the Lord of like, even if you never heal me, mm -hmm. 
I st- like, I know you love me. I know you care for me and you will like, I will see goodness here, whatever that looks like. It might not look like a baby, but it, but I believe I'll see goodness here. And so, um, the month that I actually conceived was my worst month that I had had in years. Wow. Um, I had been bleeding for 22 days straight. Wow. Um, and so I was the most discouraged I've probably been in a really long and this time. Is in South Africa. It was in South Africa. So right. I'm like, you know, like I'm starting my, like we're trying to do a good thing with our jobs. And <laughs> yeah. like, I'm just, I'm at a low point in my faith in this specific area, wondering like, what is going on? I've been doing everything that I can health wise. Um, and I've been praying and praying and praying and having so many people pray over me, but I'm having a daily hourly reminder that something's not right in my body and this is not getting better. Um, and at this point we were open to the idea of starting a family pretty soon. Um, and so I was like, I had multiple times throughout this month where I was just really, really calling out to the Lord but he brought me to this space and I was on the phone with my friend, Abby. And I was like, you know what? The way that Kyle, the way that God brought Kyle to the mission field was God, you know, doing it in his way, in his timing, speaking it over him. And now like we're on the mission field and I know it's because God's perfect timing and his perfect way that he brought us here. And it's such a great testimony to him. So I believe that he's actually going to do the same thing with this. Like the way he does it, his timing is going to be perfect. The way he heals me, it's going to bring the most glory to him. Mm. And I just want to really believe in that, that his timing is better, even if it's not anytime soon, even if it's maybe if it's, even if it's not in this lifetime, you know, that his story, what he makes out of this is going to be better than what mm. I can bring him. And it was actually the next day I stopped bleeding. So that was, you know, I was like, oh, well, at least I stopped bleeding. That's great. But that doesn't mean my endometriosis is healed. It doesn't mean I'm, you know, whatever. So I went to the doctor the next week, um, finally had gotten in to see them. And I was like, there's something wrong. You need to do an ultrasound to check, like, if there's a cyst, if there's something going on that's causing all this bleeding. She does the ultrasound. And as she's doing the ultrasound, she's like, I can't find any reason for this bleeding. But there's a little baby in here. Oh, (laughs) my gosh. I was like. Are you sure? <laughs> and I was so early on. It was like four weeks, wow. three days. Like, yeah. <laughs> so cute. So, me too. yeah. So it was, it was wow. so miraculous to be like in the moment where I was, had the lowest faith. Like my, my faith was so weak in that moment of being like, I, why, why is this happening? Nothing in my circumstances looks like healing. And yet the Lord already had placed a baby in me and it had been hanging out in there for two weeks and I didn't even know it, you know? And so it's like, wow, I think I really learned like what I see on this earth. Like it's not the full picture, what he's doing. He has plans that are so much bigger. And he's like, he could be speaking to you right now. Like I've already been growing that, that miracle in your life for the last, you know, two years, but you just haven't seen it come to fruition yet, but it's in the works. It's on, it's, you know, and my timing will be better. And now I get to share this story and I'm like, it is way better. This story is way better than if he had healed me, you know, the first time I ever prayed for it, you know, like I think that walking with him in it, it produced so much more fruit in my life and, and a deeper relationship with him and such a good reminder that this isn't like a faith exchange for (laughs) the answer and I think it kind of makes sense that he would answer it at a moment where you felt like your faith was low Mm -hmm. because I mean scripture tells us all we need is a mustard seed size faith and there is no big or right amount of faith that's going to then produce the answer to the prayer in your life yeah and I can see that God probably wanted He wanted to make sure you didn't give yourself credit for the miracle he was going to bring, you know? And so what a beautiful story. So Kyle, from your, I mean, obviously it brings emotion out of you as it should. And what was this journey like for you on, on your side of things? I mean, through the years of like once we had been married and I was like in the experience of like the pain that she'd be feeling and just the walk that she was going through. It's always very difficult for me on the outside of like, I literally like, I'm just watching you in pain and I can't do anything about it. And like Bailey said, like we had experienced like situations in which like in the midst of pain, like through prayer, it was just taken away mm-hmm. on the dime. And that was amazing and beautiful and like faith building as well. But, um, at that point of, um, the, like finding out she was pregnant, um, it had just been very hard 
leading up to that because of just the weeks of bleeding and just like seeing how discouraged Bailey was and just how like how how tough like that walk was for her and then again just me like over here being like like what can yeah. I even do like uh, like I can pray and I can like support you and like be there but like there's nothing that like I can do to help it and the, and then knowing like okay yeah let's go see like if there's something wrong or like what could be causing this like if there's something else we need to do and then like finding out afterwards <laughs> that like there was a baby was just like mind-blowing to wow. me especially yeah. because like at that point like yes we were like open to like trying to start a family and had been moving that direction but it, that in and of itself was also like a very big surprise and so like just like Bailey was saying like his timing and his plan was so much more perfect and so much mm -hmm. more like mm -hmm. beautiful than we could have yeah. <laughs> planned it out ourselves for sure yeah. so and I just love that you know I was praying for healing for my endometriosis I wasn't necessarily praying that I would be pregnant that month but it just is so cool because my main fear in this endometriosis was the infertility and so my everything was rooted in lord please heal me because i can deal with the pain monthly obviously it's not fun but i really like want i have this like this thing that my heart desires for which is to start a family with kyle one day and so that was what was the most scary to me mm. so it was just so beautiful that the way the lord answered that healing prayer was through the miracle of seeing a baby mm. be like be in me and i was like wow like just his care and his the i don't know just the way he presented that to us it was it was far exceeding what we could have ever asked for yeah. yeah well and to just have it on the heels of you saying yes to this other thing that he's calling you into which was yeah. moving overseas and not that blessing comes from obedience that's not mm -hmm. that's not how god works right. that is the prosperity gospel we don't believe in that mm -hmm. yeah. but there is something to be said about when we start to walk in the direction of the lord mm -hmm. he does so much more in our life than we could possibly imagine yeah. or hope. And so for him to show up right on the heels of you obediently stepping into this new season of moving overseas and to then bring this other twist to your journey mm -hmm. is, is just another beautiful aspect of his character yeah. of, mm -hmm. kind of what you said, like he loves you mm -hmm. and he wants good things for us mm -hmm. and he doesn't want to withhold blessing, but he wants our hearts to be in it for the right reasons. And he yeah. wants yeah. our obedience to be just because we love him and yeah. want to make much of him, not because we want him to give us something. Yeah. And once your heart is in that posture, again, it doesn't mean you're going to see the blessing. Cause like you right. said, it may not be fulfilled in this lifetime, whatever that thing is. Yeah. But he wants your heart, and there is so much more for you to be to, for you to experience on the other side of giving your full surrender and your full yes, and then seeing what God does with that yeah. in turn. So mm -hmm. these two things, these two big yeses, one you made the decision to, one God miraculously granted you, yeah. and you've experienced them both simultaneously <laughs> within six months of yeah. each other. Um, so what's the biggest thing that you learned about God through it all? Man. I mean, I guess of anything, like, it has just strengthened my faith so much that truly God has good things in store for those who love him. Like, and it's not always going to play out the way that we think. And I think we can't confuse that with that there will be suffering and there will be hard things. And saying yes to God sometimes means suffering, but there is beauty in saying yes to him and I think he just knows you so like he knows all of us so personally. He knows the things that are going to bring us joy. He knows the things that are going to grow our faith. He knows how to care for us in the low moments. And so I think I've just learned that he's such a specific, mm. intentional, individual God. And it is so fun to like put the pieces together of all mm. the things that God has been doing all like all along. I think every time I look back um, I'm just reminded of like, oh, that thing. And then that thing. And then he asked mm. me to do this. And then, you know, I randomly ran into Allie at the coffee shop yeah. and like <laughs> all these things that like God really works all these things together. Um, there's so much more happening than what we understand yes. in each moment. And so that's why I think people can get really discouraged. I can't, I can get really discouraged. Um, 
trying to figure out what you're supposed to do with your life or why isn't this one thing happening that I really am praying for. And ultimately there's room for that like grieve with the lord go Mm. to him and ask him why is this happening or why aren't why can't i figure this out why am i not where i thought i would be these questions are like good things and he met me in the middle of me asking those questions but ultimately have faith that he really does love you and he has good things in store for Mm. you and walk that out like really believe it in your heart because i think it makes the low seasons or the confusing seasons easier Um, and more joyful when you can say like, I know he's working for me. I know he loves me. Like just really proclaiming that over yourself and over your life. Um, rather than having a view of like, what's going on? Like, I don't know. Like we just, I don't know. Yeah. Feeling really forgotten. And, and yeah, man, I have so much empathy for that, but it's, that's why I think it's so good to have great community in your life. People that push you back to Jesus and the truth. Mm -hmm. Like you need that. So sometimes you need the hard like, hey, <laughs> yeah, you need to come on, keep walking. Like he's yeah. with you. Keep going. Um, yeah. yeah. So good. What would you say, Cal? I think not that it necessarily makes it any easier in the moment, but d- the the idea of like why not be obedient? Like in every little thing, if it's like praying for the woman at the grocery store or taking a step towards a new job or going overseas for missions or whatever it may be like Mm. looking back on even just the past few years of life and seeing like, okay, which way did I go when I said yes? And which way did I go when I said no? Mm. And seeing like the way that I went when I said yes was so much better and not because of me or what I did, but because of what the Lord brought. And so like, in those moments where I'm like, okay, like maybe the Lord wants me to go do this or maybe he wants me to go do that. Like, why would I not say yes? Mm -hmm. But I will say it's still hard. It doesn't, I don't think it necessarily gets like easier in the moment. Like Bailey's saying like, you can work that muscle and get like that, like desire to be obedient stronger and stronger. But like the enemy is still always working against that. And like he will bring obstacles and roadblocks to try to get you to say no. But like, saying yes in the moment like will bring so much more beauty Mm -hmm. and so much more like faith building for you as well like do you trust him yeah you know do you like really trust that he has like your whole life in his hands like he really is there to to carry out his beautiful plans in your life um Because I think that is the the biggest thing. It's like, do you really trust that Mm. if he's telling you to do it, he's a good dad. Like, Mm -hmm. he's not trying to give you (laughs) stones instead of bread. Like, he's trying to give you bread. So, like, take it, you know? Yeah, that's so good. Okay, so tell us about the work you're doing in Africa and Mm -hmm. what you're excited about as you. I mean, you're still new there, you know, just under a year. Yeah, Um, yeah, what does the Lord have you doing there? So, uh, again, we're with an organization called Impact Africa, and, like, we cannot— speak more highly about Mm. that organization they're just extremely healthy and just want the best for all of their staff as well as just the people of south africa Mm. too and so um the organization's been there for 20 years now and so it's like very well established and like we have a lot of great connections within uh, the communities that we're serving and so for us personally we're um really handling a lot of the day-to-day side of the internship. So anybody out there who needs a summer or a semester off in South Africa serving the Lord, uh, we have three to 10 month internships um, where you uh, come and just um, evangelize and serve um, the people of South Africa. And Bailey and I are the intern advisors. So we'll be walking um, with those interns in that season, discipling, leading Bible studies, leading like midweek services and worship times and just like one-on-one like discipleship as well and then also just all the fun soft moment stuff too like we'll go for a safari or we'll uh, just have game nights or just hang out at dinner or um, whatever it may be like we're just living in the lives of these interns and um, that's been so beautiful just to get to see uh, the Lord working Mm. in so many people's lives. And then also with that, like we're going out and doing 
the ministry with those interns as well. And so that um, looks like a lot of different things. We have a few different facets of ministry. The thing that I think I love the most and what most people come to find to love the most too is just the door-to-door evangelism. And so... um, the townships in uh, South Africa are basically just squatter camps, um, mm. like tin shacks, um, like gray water running through the streets. And we'll just go out there and bounce around, talk to people, share yeah. the gospel with them. And we really want to push like also like the relational side of things too. Like we want to go out and like just show the love of Jesus too. Like we're not out here like hammering them with the gospel. Sure. Like, um, there's time and place for like, where are you going if you die today yeah. conversations, <laughs> but like, we just want to love on people yeah. and just like the people there too are so like willing to accept that too. Like we'll walk up to people and they're like, Oh, come inside. Like, let me grab you a chair. Like, do you want a tea or like a biscuit or something? And like, just so amazing. Wow. And then we'll just sit and have hour long conversations with these people and it is so amazing and the fruit like that the Lord brings through that is so beautiful as well and then we have things from like student ministry in like the public schools in the townships as well all the way to um, the baby rescue side of things Mm -hmm. that the Tim Tebow Foundation is um, very heavily partnered with as well Um, on average that is known about three to four babies every day are dumped or abandoned in just Johannesburg alone. And so Impact Africa with Tim Tebow Foundation is really pushing to bring awareness and try to bring that to an end. And we have um, four or five different baby homes with like Mm full-time care staff where if one of these babies is found, we can take them in um, while they're looking for like next of kin or adoption. And so Mm -hmm. we'll also get to go and serve at the homes and hang out with the babies, Mm -hmm. help feedings and different things too, which is a lot of fun as well. Yeah, that's awesome. It's a lot going on there. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, What about you? What's your favorite part? Um, yeah, I have a big heart for young moms. That is, a, that's something that the Lord really put on my heart a couple years ago. And so that's actually what originally connected me with the organization. When I found out about their baby rescue mm-hmm. ministry, that's what I really wanted, um, to have an extra part of. And so it's really great. I get to, um, my favorite thing that we do is we go into local hospitals, the government hospitals, which don't necessarily have great care. It's kind of, you know, we go into the maternity ward, And it's 30 women all in one room with their newborn babies. But we get to bring them um, these like packages that have baby clothes in them and diapers and formula Mm. and anything that mom would need for postpartum and just kind of care for them. And I get to pray over the moms Mm. in that moment. And it's so impactful. Prayer is so powerful. And I think we don't always get to walk in long term relationship with everyone that we meet. Um, in the communities that we serve, it might just be, you know, we're only there for an hour and we never see them again. Um, we do try to point them to local churches to have continued care, but ultimately I have to believe in that moment that I'm going to pray for this woman. I'm going to pray for a legacy of faith in her family. I'm going to pray that God would meet her in the hard moments of parenting and all these things. I have to really believe and partner with God that like, this is, God is going to continue to care for this woman Mm -hmm. and he is going to, you know, work in her life. And I, I pray that every good thing that ever comes her way, that she would be reminded that God loves her, Mm -hmm. you know? And so it is, it's a beautiful blessing to be a part of those moments and just be able to connect with someone and say like, the Lord loves you Mm -hmm. and he's going to care for you in this baby. And this baby is a miracle and a Mm -hmm. blessing in your life. And Mm -hmm. I pray this baby teaches you more about God, you know, just by, you know, (laughs) know, I'm ready for it. (laughs) So yeah, that to me, um, aside from our work with the interns and that, that discipleship side Mm. is so great because I was the 18 year old that was like, I think I'm supposed to be a missionary and I don't know what this means. Uh, And so I get to minister to people that are in the Mm -hmm. exact same situation as me. And tell um, them your story, which I yeah. feel like yeah. is so helpful of, I have been in your mm-hmm. shoes <laughs> yeah. where God has called me to save the world and go around and talk everybody <laughs> about him. And yeah. then to look where he's brought you is so yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. Well, you guys, from the moment I met you, there was a light about you that Jesus shines out of you so clearly, mm-hmm. individually and together. And to see the incredible work that you're doing in South Africa, 
to be a sideline cheerleader to this miracle baby is such an honor. And the transparency in which you share your story with, I know it's going to help people because there are people listening who have dreams that God has given them and they don't know how to say yes and they don't know how to take steps in obedience. And there are people listening who have prayed for years for healing Mm. or for fertility or whatever it may be, whatever big thing, and they don't feel heard and they don't feel answered. And they needed to hear today that God is an individual God who sees Mm. them and that you are a testament to that. So I just thank you guys Mm. so much for Mm -hmm. coming, for running into a bold beat (laughs) and now getting to share all that God's doing in and through your life. It's incredible to be a part of. So thanks for your Mm. obedience in that. Thank you so much, Allie. It's such a blessing to us too. We love y'all. Can't wait to come to South Africa. (laughs) Speaking of my sister being at 1122, (laughs) We've already been trying to recruit some some sort of trip for a missions trip there you out go. there. So there you go. I'll be a part of <laughs> it. Join forces with neighbors yeah. for sure. All right, thank you guys. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> neighbors is produced by Logger Creative and Taylor Minning. Music by Austin and Lindsay Adamac. Artwork by Wesley Parsons and motion graphics by Robbie Burns.